and who most needed saving. Please welcome Jim Breen. So Jim, you, you uh, had, had a very good life, a very successful businessman and all that, so you're 41 and they asked you to go on The Secret Millionaire and when you were talking to them about it, you kind of blurted out something that you had never really admitted to yourself before either, yeah? Yeah, um, so I, I don't watch TV and, and I hadn't heard the programme Secret Millionaire and when I was asked initially to do it, um, you know, it, it just wasn't my, wasn't my thing. And uh, living in Kerry, it's always a good litmus test. If, if people from Dublin are serious about something, they'll, they'll come to Kerry and right. talk to you about it. So I said, um, you know, I'd be Kerry a couple of days' time, you know, we can meet. And by the time I met them, I'd seen John Concannon, who'd been on The Secret Millionaire the first year. And I thought he was, he thought he did a remarkable job. So it was a really good format. And um, I guess in those two days, I, I, I thought about it quite a bit. And, it was just at that time, literally in those couple of days, that, um, that I thought, you know, I battled with depression. And um, it was a funny catalyst to have a, have a, a program, a TV program, or something that you'd, you'd use as the, um, as the way to, to, to talk about it, and not something I'd recommend to others. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, um, it was the catalyst for me, and, and I guess... So you had never before <coughs> really thought about this or admitted it to yourself or anything, no? No, and um, it was very hard even just to say it. And even today, you know, two, day, two years later, when I'm a lot more comfortable and, and confident talking about it, um, I, even the words I find hard. Like, for example, people ask me, you know, what, what does depression feel like? And I can, I can tell what anger feels like or a sadness or happiness feels like, but I only really experience depression. You know, I don't feel depression. Um, when I... When I'm in a battle, when I'm, when I'm in, a, in a period of depression, when I'm, when I'm experiencing it, um, like I, I love music, I love that singing, I, I love music. And if I'm in the middle of a bout of depression, all I hear is noise. Um, I love tastes and smells, and I can't smell anything and I can't taste anything. I don't lose my hunger, just you could put anything in front of me and you know, it just, just all tastes the same. Uh, colours are all the same. Mm. Um, and I guess I thought that was normal. I guess I thought that everybody uh, would have periods of their life where for a few hours or sometimes a few days or sometimes a week uh, that, that you'd have that. And um, of course it's not normal, of course it's not natural. Um, and the program, particularly because I had the opportunity of meeting with Suicide Awareness Dublin 15 mm. and seeing the work that they did, the amazing work that they did, it. Um, it ended up really, the, the, the conversation really began happening um, between others and me, but also, you know, between myself or within myself with Secret Millionaire. And it obviously hadn't affected you professionally, like you, you were performing very well. It did affect, didn't it, your relationships, like with, with your, your parents, your siblings, stuff like that, yeah? Yeah, I mean, work-wise, in a way, it's kind of a, it's an advantage, right? Because, um, you know, I can't stop, I can't be still. Uh, I don't do stillness, I don't do quietness. Um, so from a work perspective, it's great, you know. Um, if I was working for somebody else, they'd get great value for money. Because um, you keep running away, running, yeah, running, you're running. you're just yeah. all the time, you know, on the go. And is it when it stops then, is that yeah, what like, you can't handle, yeah? I mean, I've, I've been in uh, about nine cities in the last ten days. I fly to Sweden tomorrow morning at seven o'clock. Easy peasy. But, uh, you know, you give me a Saturday or God forbid a Tuesday when I don't have anything on and uh, th the challenge is to, to get out of bed, you know, when, when you've got, when you're experiencing depression. So it's yeah. not all the time, it's just when it hits you. Yeah. And what did, uh, <coughs> how did it damage your relationships with your parents and stuff? Well, I think um, wh what happened, and again, I think the thing about mental health is we all have mental health, we all have physical health and everybody's different. So I can only really talk for myself. But for 41 years of my life, in my mind, um, two things, I suppose. The first thing was that, um, you know, all of the problems everybody else had, right? It was never with me. Um, and the second thing was, I guess I did feel kind of selfish as well, that I always thought the worst place in the world to live was in, inside my head. 
And sometimes the worst place in the world to live was a couple of feet from my head. In other words, the, the people who were closest to me. Um, you know, living with somebody who battles depression, battles anxiety, uh, it's not an easy role, you know, to be the partner of somebody, to be the, the daughter, the son of someone who battles depression, to be the, the parent of someone who battles depression. That's a really tough station. And within Cycle Against Suicide, uh, some of the people who get the most out of the community and the, the messaging are, are not just those who are affected directly, uh, as in people who have mental health issues, but also their family and their friends, their colleagues. Um, so certainly for me, I think... Uh, the you, were good you were a difficult yeah. person to yeah. be around. Very yeah. difficult, yeah. At times, very, very difficult. Uh, come here. What, so what have you done about depression? Uh, therapy or pills or what? what are... Yes, I think, again, everybody's different. And um, I, I think medication can be really, really good for some people. And therapy can be really, really good for some people. Neither of them worked for me. Um, not to say that in the future therapy wouldn't work, but it just hasn't worked for me so far. Um, Are you going on an ongoing basis? Or? No, I tried it, and uh, it, it, I tried it a few times with a few different people. Okay. And um, I think that's part of, you know, the, the message we have is it's okay not to feel okay. It's absolutely okay to ask for help. The subtext there is sometimes you have to ask for help a few times, and you have right. to try in a few different ways. And for me, um, a couple of things really are powerful for me that I've learned about in the last two years. The first one is I watch for the signs <coughs> that is coming on. So, you know, if the, <coughs> if the day job never worked, you know, if the day job didn't work out for me, I, I'd be a great cleaner. You know, I'm, I'm OCD. Um, I, you know, and I love being in a, in a home or in an office wherever, where everything is orderly. Sure so. But if I find that the clothes aren't put in the washing machine, or if I come home from work and I spot that I didn't do the dishes, it's actually a sign, it's something I, 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 I look for. Or in the summer, if I find myself um, where I, I'm not stopping to smell the grass, cut, cut grass, or other signs you know, that, I've, that, I've, that, I've, that just make sense for me, that's the time for me to start the battle. So that's the time where, where I get in gear. And, and sometimes it means, um, I, I, was, I was in New York um, late last year, and I woke up on a Saturday morning, and, and I could feel it coming, and I just ran. And I ran for hours, you know, and I just ran for hours, and I took it on. I said, you know, it's me or you, and uh, you're there, I, and I can't, you know, control that, but what I can do is I can run faster than you, I can run harder than you, and I know that's good for me. So at the end of, you know, the, the four or five hours, yeah. I tired him out, and I think it's a him, but I don't know. Okay. Um, or you're running away from it. <clears throat> well, I think in the case of, of exercise for me, if you try and run away from it, you're, you're going to lose that race. Yeah. You've got to, in my view, and again, this is just for me, you've got to accept him, let him be there, um, but don't feed him crap food. Don't feed him alcohol. Uh, don't let him be uh, sedentary. You know, make sure that, that, again, for me, that, you, that you, you activate him, you make him run with you. And that certainly helps for me. And the other thing is, sometimes that doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, um, I remember I had a, my last tough period was at Christmas, and um, I hadn't managed to tell the signs in advance, and, and it hit me, and it hit me hard. And um, I, I tried a few things, and it just didn't work. Um, so I, I got on my bike, and I don't know if you remember the weather at Christmas, but I, I, I cycled from Kerry to Ackle. And, uh, which in itself is a, probably yeah. a mental illness. And uh, I got into Ackle and the, the lights were gone, the power was gone, there was a gale, there was roads washed away. And uh, as, I, as I got, it was getting dark, and as I arrived into Ackle, um, this woman came out of her house and she said, you big feckin' Egypt, what are you doing? <laughs> and do you not see what's going on all around you, like the craziness of the weather? And, you know, I kind of smiled to myself like that was nothing like the stuff that was going on inside my head. But it will pass. So I kept saying to myself, you know, it took me a few days to get to Eccle. And uh, every day, and then I had to cycle back. <laughs> and every day it was, this will pass. This right. will pass. And um, kind of accepting it. And, you know, the opposite of what you were saying, you really, in my case, you cannot run away from it. Okay. It's something that's there that you experience. And... 
you can try your best to nip it in the bud and that sometimes works okay. when it doesn't work it'll pass and just like the weather at Christmas it was shitty weather for day after day after day after day after day and similarly inside my head it was pretty shitty for day after day after day after day after day and you, you're, you're I know a, a big kind of philosophy with you as well is like be be nice to yourself, be kind to yourself, yeah? Yeah, we have um, one of our team in Cycle Against Suicide, is a guy called Rob Carley, and he's a great guy, he's a very, very funny guy. And on one of, so when we go around in the cycle, we stop at schools, it's a big part of our program. In fact, we had a Student Leaders Congress this year where we had 4,000 students from all over Northern Ireland and Ireland gathered in the RDS, which is the first ever health conference ever, not just mental health, where we had students from, you know, North and South. And Rob, coined the phrase, you're lovely, you're lovable, and you're loved. And I can tell you, Brendan, that you are lovely, you are lovable, and I love you. <laughs> but it's very hard for me to say that to myself. Yeah, um, I don't accept it either. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, have you, how, how are you getting on with your folks and with your siblings and stuff these Great, days? Great, yeah. Uh, my sister's here tonight. I'm not sure exactly where. Oh, there she is. And... Um, you know, my, my siblings are now involved in Cycling and Suicide. Um, I, um, I took my parents to Lanzarote for a couple of weeks, say, that just with the weather and everything else, they, they needed to get away. And I was dreading it. Uh, the thought of going away for your parents for, you know, with your parents for two weeks, um, I wasn't looking forward to it. And uh, they're looking in tonight, so sorry, ma'am, dad. Um, <laughs> uh, but better you hear it now. <laughs> but yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was wonderful. It was the best two weeks I've, I've ever had with my parents. And um, I think that's probably a lot to do with where I am, you know, where, where, this, where this journey has taken me over the last two years. And the Cycle Against Suicide community has really, really helped me uh, by being able to pick up the phone or meet people when you're not feeling great okay. and to know it's okay not to feel okay and to know it's absolutely okay to ask for help is so powerful and listen i know that one of the people you met on the cycle against suicide last year was was donald walsh who, who also was involved in anti-suicide campaigning and i know that donald's four friends now have become very involved in in cycle against suicide as well and actually they're going to join us now so please welcome hugh john cormack and james <laughs> Lads, how are you doing? Not too bad. Yeah. So you're kind of uh, ambassadors for Cycle Against Suicide this year. You're very involved, yes? Yeah, we're doing our best now, promoting it on Twitter and stuff, and we're going to take part in the cycle ourselves. Okay. So. Our school, uh, it's an anchor school as well, like, so, so it's going from Clarny to Chilean, it's stopping off then at our school to eat and stuff. Right. So listen, Donald's not even dead a year. He's the fifth member of your gang, so do you all still miss him a lot? Yeah, you know, yeah. played a big part in our lives, like, made us the men we are today, and, you know, you know, he'd be sadly missed, but, sure, he, he left a good legacy behind him. Yeah, mm. he did. And, and I know he left a lot of, uh, he, he left a lot of responsibility with a lot of different people and his, you know, his parents and his family and everything else, but you all sat down on your own with Donald when he was alive, didn't you, and talked about, I suppose, how you were all going to make the most out of your lives, is that right, after he was gone? Is that, yeah, is that right? He, yeah, like he prepared us, like, you know, because like, ultimately he was going to pass, like, you know, so um, he sat us all down and talked to us about, like, you know, what he wanted us to do in our futures and, you know, just to be successful and be happy in life. Right. So um, he bought so us did rings. did he talk specific to? Uh, sp specifically, yeah, he talked to all of us. And, you know, so what, so what, what, what did you talk to him about you going to do with your life? He just told me, just, you know, just be happy um, do all the things that he couldn't do, you know. And you know, you know, like that's the best way to remember him. Excel, like, you know, not to waste our lives, you know, do the things he couldn't do. Travel the world, do all those kind of things. And appreciate what we have, like, because some people out there don't have the opportunity that we have to do stuff. There's so much to live for, like. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. you know? yeah. our motivation for exams and for games and everything is always at the back of your, the back of your mind, like. Yeah, yeah. You just all had your mocks, did you? Yeah. yeah. Don't talk about it. Went well then, did it? <laughs> <laughs> so when did they finish? Uh, just recently. Okay. So were, were, <laughs> were you out last night? <laughs> are, you, are you hitting Dublin tonight now? Yeah, Possibly. Not, yeah. 
right. <laughs> coppers. <laughs> Too, too young for coppers, apparently, I'm being told in my ear, <laughs> yes. Um, so, because listen, uh, Finbar, uh, Donald's father, was telling me that um, you have been getting a lot of female attention as well, is that right, since you've been around the place? I do the two oh, boys over, the two of us, Well, just the two of you, is it? No, the two boys over here. <laughs> oh, true. you're not getting any, no? They're tied down. Tied down. Oh, I see, right, so on television they have to say that they're not getting yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah. I understand. And listen, Jim, the cycle against suicide is turning into, a, it's turning into quite a big movement now, isn't it? Yeah, it's phenomenal. I mean, last year the, the ambition was, you know, let's get a thousand people to cycle around the island of Ireland, shoulder to shoulder, and we ended up getting two and a half thousand. And last week we had more registrations yeah. than we had in the entire, for the entire last year. So we think we'll have seven and a half thousand people okay. take part. And... Uh, And obviously pe people can join in at various stages and stuff. Uh, John, are you going to cycle a uh, part of it this year? Yeah, yeah we, we've all talked about it. We've talked with Jim that we're going to take part in it this year. So we're all looking forward to it. Okay. All right, well, lads, uh, good to see you. Good to see you, Jim. Ladies and gentlemen, Hugh, John, Cormac, James, and of course, Jim Breen. And the Cycle Against Suicide will take place all around Ireland from April 28th to May 11th. And people can join in at various stages. For information, log on to cycleagainstsuicide.com. All right, time now to give away the holiday to Portugal. 